thank you for joining us today for the program Bible Truth. Our study today will begin at Luke 6, 24 and go through Luke 6, 26. Today's lesson is number 24 in our uh, Luke series. The date is uh, July the 10th, 2024. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Sex, that's, that is uh, from Acts 16, 31. Now this section of Luke, uh, actually beginning at uh, uh, 6, 20, uh, Luke 6, verse 20, is uh, Luke's account of the uh, Sermon on the Plateau. Now it is called such because of the uh, because of the location in which Jesus gave the sermon. Now, if you look back at verse uh, 17 uh, of Luke 6, and he came down, Jesus, and Jesus came down with them and stood on a level place with the crowd of his disciples, a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast. Tyre and Sidon, who came to hear him and be healed of their diseases. Now, that's the uh, New King James uh, Version reading, the NKJV. Now, your translation may use the word plateau or maybe plain. Now, I believe that this is the same as Matthew 5 through 7, which is called the Sermon on the Mount. However, it is surely possible that these are two separate sermons with very similar content. But in either way, please have Matthew 5 at hand so as we may do some comparisons, or you may want to do some comparisons. So Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is Matthew's account of the Sermon on the Mount. So if you just go to Matthew 5 and uh, have that handy in case we uh, want to go there. Now, uh, let me read uh, Luke 6, 24 through 26. But woe to you who are rich, uh, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full, for you shall hunger. Woe to you who laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe to you when all men speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. The false prophets. Now these woes of verses 24 through 26 that I just read do not appear as such in Matthew. They don't appear as woes, but the same principles are there. For example, verse 24. Jesus pronounces judgment on those who are currently rich. The rich are those who consider themselves as being in need of nothing. They are self-sufficient. Now remember that the underlying meanings of the Beatitudes are spiritual, not physical. Now go to, uh, go to Revelation, the last book of the Bible. I'm sure you know. Go to Revelation 3. Now, this, uh, this is a letter. Uh, it's a letter. Uh, and it's the seventh letter, uh, seventh of seven letters, dictated by Jesus to the Apostle John for delivery to seven churches of Asia Minor, uh, along with the rest of the book of uh, Revelation. Now, this church of Laodicea, uh, was very smug and did not need Jesus or his free gift of salvation. Excuse me. Because of that self-sufficient and self-righteous attitude, they would face eventual judgment and be poor. Now, uh, listen uh, to Revelation 3. I'm going to read 14 through 17. And to the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things say the Amen, 
the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Because you say, I am rich, have become wealthy, and have need of nothing, and do not know that you are wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. So if you will go back, go back to Luke now, but let's go to Luke, uh, Luke chapter 12. And uh, listen to uh, verse 16, Luke 12, 16. Uh, or starting at verse 16, and we'll go through 20. Then he spoke a uh, parable to them, Jesus again. Then he spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, since I have no room to store my crops? So he said, uh, I will do this. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store all my crops and my goods. And I will say to my soul, So, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you have provided? The man whose priority is getting treasure in this world will suffer for it in eternity. Uh, now, uh, for you have received your result, and I'm back in Luke 6 now, it's in verse 24, uh, the New King James says, for you have received your consolation. Uh, and that's a good interpretation, but it's also a good interpretation of the Hebrew word, say, result, for you have received your result. If your goal is to amass great sums of money, that is your reward that you've amassed a great amount of money. There will be no reward in heaven. Now moving on to verse 25. The first woe of verse 25 addresses those who, drink, those who deem themselves full. The point is the same as Matthew 5, 6, if you look at it, but it's stated in reverse. Are you one who says, I think I'm all right, I'm a pretty good guy, if so, you will hunger for God's righteousness and salvation in the next world. Uh, now, there is an Old Testament precedent for, for this. Go to Isaiah, Isaiah 65. Next, the last chapter of uh, the book of, book of Isaiah. Uh, there's an Old Testament uh, uh, precedent actually for the beatitude uh, that uh, the beatitude that we just read in Luke 12. God warned Israel in the same way. Now listen to Isaiah 65, uh, 13 and 14. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, my servants shall eat, but you shall be hungry. Behold, my servants shall drink, but you shall be thirsty. Behold, my servants shall rejoice, but you shall be ashamed. Behold, my servants shall sing for joy of heart, but you shall cry for sorrow of heart, and wail for grief of spirit. Well, why did God give the warning to Israel? We'll look back at uh, verse 12. Therefore, I will number you for the sword, and you shall all bow down to the slaughter. 
Because when I called, you did not answer. When I spoke, you did not hear. But did evil before my eyes, and chose that in which I do not delight. Okay, through the Isaiah, let's go back to Luke 6. Now the second woe of verse 25 is to those who laugh now. The Greek word translated laugh implies happiness, merriment, and rejoicing. Now I picture one who is convinced of his own righteousness as were the Pharisees. Uh, for those, uh, those who uh, are convinced of their own righteousness mourning and weeping is in store now Luke puts in one verse in verse 26 what Matthew put in two verses in 5 11 and 12 now woe to you if the world speaks well of you but blessed are you if the world speaks all kinds of evil against you those who are saved are not to be friends of the world at right, this time, go to John, the very next book. Uh, go to John 15. Now, this chapter, John 15, is part of the Upper Room Discourse, uh, just to get us in context here. The Upper Room Discourse was given, obviously, in the Upper Room, the night before Jesus was crucified. He was crucified for you and for me. Now listen to John 15, 18 through 25. If the world hates you, you know that it hated me before it hated you. If you were of the world, the world would love its own. Yet, because you are not of the world, but I chose you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. Remember the word that I said to you. A servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. But all these things they will do to you for my name's sake, because they do not know him who sent me. If I had not come and spoken to them, they would have no sin. But now they have no excuse for their sin. He who hates me hates my father also. If I had not done among them the works which no one else did, they would have no sin. But now they have seen and also hated me, hated both me and my father. But this happened that the word might, fulfill, might be fulfilled which is written in their law. They hated me without a cause. And that's an exact quote from Psalm 69. Now, don't miss the wording of 26b. This uh, back in Luke now, Luke, uh, Luke 6, 26b. The ones who speak well of believers follow in their father's footsteps. They, the fathers, spoke well of the false prophets. Right, now this time, go to 1 Kings, back in the Old Testament, go to 1 Kings 22. I encourage you to read this entire chapter, 1 Kings 22, uh, to get a real, uh, real complete understanding of it. But uh, uh, this talks about the... Uh, Speaking well, false prophets. For uh, today, however, just follow me as I read a, read uh, just uh, a part of the of the chapter. Uh, I'm going to start at verse six and go through thirty six. Luke, uh, not Luke, but First Kings twenty two six. Then the king of Israel. Uh, gathered the prophets together, about 400 men, and said to them, Shall I go against Ramoth Gilead to fight, or shall I refrain? So they said, Go up, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. And Jehoshaphat said, Is there not still a prophet of the Lord here that we may inquire of him? 
So the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, There, there is still one man, Micaiah, uh, the son of uh, Imlah, but, uh, but by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him because he does not prophesy good concerning me, but evil. And Jehoshaphat said, Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say such things. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, the son of Imlah, quickly. Then the king of Israel called an officer and said, Bring Micaiah, the son of Imlah, Imlah quickly. The king of Israel, uh, excuse me, I think I read verse 9 twice, <laughs> but now in verse 10. Right, the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, having put on their robes, sat each on his throne at a threshing floor at the entrance of the gate of uh, Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Now Zedekiah, the son of Chenanah, had made horns of iron for himself, and he said, Thus says the Lord, With these you shall gore the Syrians until they are destroyed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, uh, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the king's hand. Then the messenger who had gone to call Micaiah spoke to him, saying, Now listen, the words of the prophets with one accord, all 600 of them, uh, uh, encourage the king. So let your words encourage the king. Please let your word be like the word of one of them, and speak encouragement. And Micaiah said, As the Lord lives, whatever the Lord says to me, that I will speak. Then he came to the king, and the king said to him, Micaiah, shall we go to war against Ramoth Gilead, or shall we refrain? And he answered him, Go and prosper, for the Lord will deliver it into the hand of the king. So the king said to him, how many times shall I make you swear that you tell me nothing but the truth in the name of the Lord? Then he said, Well, I saw all Israel scattered on the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let each return to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell you he would prophesy that he would not prophesy good concerning me but evil? Then Micaiah said, Therefore, hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne and all the host of heaven standing by on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will persuade Ahab to go up that he may fall at Ramoth Gilead? So uh, one spoke in this manner and another spoke in that manner. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. So the Lord said to him, In what way? The Lord said to him, uh, uh, In what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, You shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. Therefore, look, the Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these prophets of yours, and the Lord has declared disaster against you. Now Zedekiah, the son of uh, Chenanah, went near and struck Micaiah on the cheek and said, Which way did the Spirit from the Lord from me speak to you? And Micaiah said, Indeed, you shall see on that day when you go into an inner chamber to hide. So, uh, so the king of Israel said, Take Micaiah and return him to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus says the king, Put this fellow in prison and feed him bread of affliction and water of affliction until I come in peace. But Micaiah said, If you ever return in peace, the Lord has not spoken by me. And he said, Take heed, all you people. So the rest of the verses through through thirty six describe the battle, and uh, in thirty six, uh, every man went to his city and every man to his own country, just as Micaiah uh, had dreamed, and just as he had prophesied. And in verse thirty seven, so the king Ahab died and was brought to Samaria, and they buried the king in Samaria.
So the prophets, the prophets spoke well to the king, but they were not speaking for God. They were not speaking words, the words that, that God had given them. Now, let's finish uh, today's lesson with a passage in Acts 5. All right, Luke, John, Acts, uh, and uh, go to Acts 5. And this is a this is a this is a much shorter passage right here, but uh, let's finish the lesson with this passage in Acts five, and uh, and of course please turn there uh, if you will while I read Luke five, uh, and I'm going to start at twenty five and go through forty two. So one came and told them saying, "Look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people." Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, Did we not strictly command you not to teach in this name? And look, you have filled uh, Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought, to obey, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be a prince and savior, to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. Verse 33, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Then one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, held in respect by all the people and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take heed to yourselves and what you intend to do regarding, regarding these men. For some time ago, Thutis rose up, claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain, and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. After this man, Judas of Galilee rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, Keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it, lest you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So, they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. And daily in the temple and in every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Paul wrote in his first epistle, If you are uh, reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you. For the spirit of glory and of God rests upon you. And that's the uh, that's the lesson for today. Uh, we'll start, uh, of course, where we left off uh, today. Uh, next time. Thank you again to those who are joining us via YouTube. It is our prayer that this time together was meaningful to you and you learned more about God's Word. God alone can save, and He saves through His Son, Jesus Christ. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And that's uh, those are Jesus' words uh, as uh, written in John fourteen six. Dear Lord, thank you for letting us get together and study your word today. 
Lord, uh, thank you for these passages that we've that we've read today, uh, and uh, thank you for these beatitudes that uh, were written down uh, by 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 Luke and also by Matthew. Uh, and Lord, even though they don't use exactly the same words, we understand the uh, principles that are there. Lord, help us to follow you each day. Lord, help us be a witness for you so that others might see you through us and, uh, be and become saved. And Lord, we do pray for the unsaved all over the world that uh, they would receive that free gift of salvation before it's too late. And uh, Lord, I ask all this in your name. Amen.